Hey, good evening, good evening. It is the 13th of February, 2024. It's been a long time since I've uh, come out here and spoke. Um, it, it had, there's a reason for it. I believe last year in January, I said it was going to come out. It was going to get started again and get the channel going. Fizzled completely out. And I can tell you, every time <clears throat> that I sat down here in front of this camera, I couldn't find my voice. And by the way, I apologize. I have a little bit of <clears throat> the, the word you can't say right now. Head feels like it's going to pop. Like eyeballs need to just come out and drain. That's that's an aside, but I sound terrible. Uh, but I also, I have to tell you about this right now. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories here. And this, I hope this doesn't take a long time. But what I'm going to, let me just, let me start with the finish of this. I've just been through an experience in life that, uh, you know, I was talking with my father about it. And he just said, he was just laughing. He's like, you should write a book. You should really write a book about this. And I think he's right. And I actually think I can bang out a couple hundred pages of a book about this thing that I'm living through right now in a week or two. Uh, so that's that's the end of the story. So let me tell, take you to the beginning of the story. So the few people that are going to see this video, right? You go way back with me, and we're talking way back. So I'm going to go way back to 2009. Financial crisis was going on. This is when this is when I was involved in YouTube. And uh, it was a really weird time in my life, and I was really, um, you know what, frankly, I'll always say it when I'm looking back on that. I was off my rocker. Like, I, I didn't have a firm grasp on reality anywhere. But a friend of mine taught me meditation. I don't know why. I mean, at that time, I didn't know. I know why now, but he taught me meditation. I remember I, I, I learned to put myself under and I put myself under several times in these deep meditative states. And there was a story from way back and this really happened to me and you don't have to believe it, but I put myself under and I came to in this really old neighborhood. And I mean, I'm standing there on my feet like I'm really there. Like this is, you could call it a dream. And I suppose that's what it was, but it was a meditative state kind of dream. I'm standing in this old neighborhood. It is definitely the fall. Uh, the temperature is that. The trees are, are brown. There's leaves falling around me like it's a Hollywood movie. There's almost like that vanilla sky fall color. And a woman approaches me in the street. And she approaches me and says, hi, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer. I have some people I need you to meet. And she walks me to one of these old houses and it's, uh, we're talking like a three-story house, wraparound porch, like 1920s kind of style. I've seen these in Arkansas, but I always, I always when I look back on it, I thought I was in Pennsylvania. I don't know why, but that was the thought. And I'm sorry, this is the kind of day where this is warranted, and I'm going to get to that. Um, so she takes me to this house, and I meet these three guys, and each of the three guys takes me through a test, and it was very, very strange. The next day, um, the person that I'd seen in the dream was somebody from YouTube that I had been emailing back and forth with. I did not know them. She had told me, I believe that she was a psychologist, um, and we'd been exchanging emails. It's the same person from this vision. So I emailed her straight away and said, I need you to send me a picture of yourself because I just met you in a vision. So I get a picture about three hours later, and I look at it, open it up, and lo and behold, this is exactly the same woman that strange and really weird part of this is the picture is a early 30 something woman and who I met was an older lady anyway it turns out that at the same moment that uh, I had the vision she was on a plane meditating she had just left training with red elk at that time so my mind was just poof just blown away and, and I'm not joking in like three months prior to this incident um, I think I had declared myself an atheist for a day, but the day that I declared myself an atheist was the day the weird shits. It just started. So there's that whole story. That was like 2009, maybe 2010. So let's fast forward to 2020, and this is where my book will begin. <laughs> oh, this is so ridiculous. Uh, you know, <laughs> round one started. Um, oh no, we can't work anymore. So I lost, I lost both my jobs. Just pop, pop. I was fat. Let me tell you, when I lost that second job, I was fat. 
I'm not going to say effing fat, but that's how I feel about when I describe I was fat. I had, I had, okay, I'm unemployed. I lost two jobs, just three hours of each other, just gone. Good riddance. Okay. So the next day I went, spent some time at unemployment, got all that kicked in. And then I, I took the next three months to just get myself back in shape. Um, I bought my little gym here behind me and yeah, forgive all the junk. Such a great studio, but I got a little gym back here behind me. I dieted, I quit drinking so much, lost a lot of weight. And it all got old, you know. I was, once 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 I personally realized that COVID-19 was really nothing. I didn't I wasn't seeing anybody. I was hearing anecdotal stories of people dying, but I didn't see shit. Wasn't seeing any of it. I started looking for work again, and that was in uh late May, May of 2020. And um for, I mean, I got on Indeed just like anybody else. Found a job. So I saw one. And I, saw, I saw what they paid, and I was just like, "Poor shit." They don't pay that much, but I'm unemployed, and why not? If I don't get a job, I collect unemployment still. So I went down and talked with them, and I mean, it was quite literally. And let's find out what these guys are all about. So I sat down with these guys, and I knew immediately, sitting across from the two men at the table, that. They were not full of shit. They were 100% serious. Um, what they had advertised as pay was dead serious. And it turned out to be a low ball. Um, so I went in thinking this is this is way too much money for them to pay. So I'm going to go have a laugh and see what kind of spiel they've got. I left there 100% convinced that I could make more than double what they had offered. And I knew in that moment too, because this, um, this, this is a job as a technician. For a, uh, for a company. Let's just leave it at that for now. Um, I left there floating like, damn, this is like this is the real deal. I, I mean, I expect some bullshit. I expect somebody to tell me a lot of stuff that's too good to be true. But the delivery was so absolutely authentic. And it was basically, we are new. This is a big name company. Uh, we're the first one in the area. Um, we have literally no call. Once we have our team built, we have no one in the area that can compete. And they were right. They were spot on correct about that. That that part was absolutely true. And they're gonna make a sh they're gonna make a load of, a lot of money, and they're gonna expand quickly. And that also something they told me turned out to be true. And I realized leaving there, like they're really good at what they do, and they sold me on this job. And I and I, they're they're sharks. I know it, and I can learn from these sharks. And I it, I'll take it. I'll take a sales commission style job. When we're about to go into a major inflation, I knew all of this in 2020 was coming. So, yeah, it was good, man. Off to the races we went. Um, so they had told me they've got this top guy here. Um, let's just call him Steve. Steve, uh, Steve and I did not get along at first, and I could tell he was also a shark. And being out with this guy and being from my my background that it is psychological warfare and. And I know this is a sales guy, and I know he's going to be a bullshitter, and I'm going to be trying to read him and figure him out. And he's going to be doing the same. Uh, so we did not get along. He, we did not like each other. But I realized something about him. I don't know if it was the first day out with him or maybe the second day out with him. But at some point, I don't remember he said something or there was a gesture, but I had this, this incredible, intense realization that he was the first guy from the vision in 2008 or 2010. No shit. This is no shit. I can't remember the man's face, but I knew it. Like, I just knew this. A 100, no question about it. So I've just started with this company. I do not like this man. He does not like me. But I did realize it this moment early on, like, and I mean with intense, intense certainty, I knew exactly who this guy was. I don't know why I'm here with him in a van doing a technical job. So, okay, is this weird enough for you yet? It's going to get weirder. I didn't tell him any of that for 18 months after starting there. And when I started there, he washed me out of that side immediately, and I went to the other side of our company, and I've excelled. Um, I, I more or less picked up as the senior guy within, I don't know, six months. It was it was six months a year. It was it was ridiculous how fast I became the man. 
me and, me and uh, this individual, Steve, we eventually got along. And I did eventually. I had a really fucking awful day. And I mean, and I had a, probably hundreds of awful days. But this was a particularly awful day. It's pouring down rain. Um, I'm soaking wet. It's cold. I've been out in it all day. I see Steve and I'm talking with him and I just spill it to him. And as I spill it to him, uh, it was after a lot of expletives and how awful this day was. And I just started laughing. I said, I got to tell you something, man. And then I spilled it to him. And before I could finish the story, he described the neighborhood. He described the roofs on the houses in particular. Like nailed it. And I was like, okay. So if my mind was blown when I realized that the Dr. Cheryl Meyer that I saw in the vision was this person. This man finished my story when I was telling him about a vision I had 14 years ago because he was there. <clears throat> he finished the story because he was there. Are you with me? This is how weird things have got. So let me tell you where I'm at in this in this particular story and why this is going to become a book. And I, I don't know. I'm, I've already come up with 10 different ways to write it. I haven't. It's going to take a while to get this all figured out. Here's where this this whole thing is at right now. Um, so I feel like um, if you watch The Matrix and everybody, if you're watching this, you've almost certainly seen The Matrix. This is that follow the white rabbit moment like I got it. Because I can tell you, having been at this company for the length of time I've been there, that I should have left. I should have left that company I've been there almost four years. I should have left there almost four years ago. There were a lot of red flags that I should have. And I stuck. Oh, <laughs> and this is the book. This is the what the book's going to be about. Is like all the, It's going to be about the company more than anything. I'm telling you the, I'm telling you this side of the, the book I'm going to write is about the company. But trust me when I say I, I should have run out the door screaming for the better part of the last four years. <laughs> and I put... I put my notice in last week and I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I got the sensation since, and I'm sorry that the stuff is just, just really obnoxious. January 2nd, this year, my gut came and talked to me. That has uh, literally never happened ever. I've had gut feelings before and I've had gut feelings that were intense and correct before. And I've learned to trust my gut. And I've learned, I don't know, in the last maybe five to ten years to really, really fine-tune and trust my own intuition and my gut. My gut never talks to me, though. But January 2nd, I get this real hard gut poke. Just, mm. And it came, with the, it came with words. And I mean, it was like, it was so intense. It was like God was speaking to me. And the words were, get out. And it was in reference to this company. And it was so intense, I actually said, I actually looked around and spoke out loud and said, if I'm supposed to get out, what am I supposed to do? And it came again. I got an answer. It was intense. It was get out. Oh man, this is okay. I understand. This is my gut talking to me January 2nd this year. January 4th. Um, and I want to tell you this. I started with this company making really good money. Uh, they haven't done shit about inflation. They have doubled our prices in the last three and a half years. They've done almost nothing for our pay. But they were promising us that when this company is building, they were promising us the world. Get the company going. Make everybody rich. Make it big. You're going to reap the benefits. They came with a pay cut two days after I got that gut sensation. So... I talked to my immediate boss and I said, look, I, uh, I don't know what they're doing, but I've been talking with you about leaving this company for over a year now. If they don't do something about our pain, it looks like they just went backwards. And he's like, yeah, let me try to fix this camera. Yeah, it did. I said, okay. Um, I said, if they do that one more time, then I swear on everything I love, I will quit that day. No notice, no nothing. I will walk out. Guess what? One week later, here came the next pay cut. And uh, the last one was, it was really no big deal. It was, it was compensation for something. Get, if something happens wrong between me and the job, and through no fault of my own, something happens where I cannot do the job, they would pay me the job. Well, they took that away. But 
mistakes aren't being made, so no big deal. But the next one came with, well, if you have to do a warranty service, well, we're going to cut your pay from like X amount to one third that amount. And the original amount was already shit. I could have thrown it in the trash can and never done it. So this is all, this is all happened. And I followed through and I, I basically put everybody on notice. This is it. I'm done. Tomorrow morning, I bring all my stuff in. I'll go finish today. I was convinced to stay for other reasons, which are going to be in the book much later. Um, oh, by the way, part of the reason I'm making this video is just to have a reference to come back to and look at how I was feeling about it. Because I am in the middle of this. Like, what happens tomorrow is going to be in the book. And after tomorrow is in the book, we're right in the middle of what's happening right now. And I guess I still haven't quite got to that. So, um... Yeah, yeah. So I have, uh, I was ready to quit. I was talking to holding off on it. And I was told, you know, just hold out a little while longer. Don't screw us. And I said, I'll give you as long as I possibly can, but basically don't, don't screw with me. Don't, don't overload me. Don't kill me. Don't, don't ask me to do anything absurd. Just let me do my job. And I said, and if you do, I'm finished with it. And then, you know, this is, a week ago, they, they threw it at me. They threw it at me hard. And I put my notice in. And uh, the day before I put my notice in, uh, another kid, and I mean top performing guy, we, we really kind of need him, was at work, 7 a.m., half drunk, quitting out of thin air without explanation, to my knowledge. I don't, maybe there's an explanation, but he just, he was gone. That occurred right after someone else had put their notice in, someone very important. And and then here I came. I guess, yeah, it was a Thursday. I was going to wait till Friday, basically, so you got me for two more weeks. But I, I couldn't wait. I came in on Thursday and just said, hey, man, I'm so sorry. The the man I'm speaking about, great manager, I he didn't deserve even to hear this. But I just said, I'm sorry to tell you, but 23rd of February, that's, that's it, I'm going. Since that time, and this is the story, so it's this is right now. It is the 13th of February. I have 10 days left at this company. I am a top guy on a team that only employs uh, three individuals who are really qualified to go do what we do. I'm leaving. The other guy, <laughs> he's uh, got a severely damaged hand, so he can't really work. He's directing another guy that's new, but... It's difficult. And then our other our other guy has sworn he would quit if his if he ever had his team fall apart again. And he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna retrain everything again and again and again. So what happens today is uh another major manager put their notice in and another technician dropped notice in. Well, I'm living in the middle of this whole company's collapsing right now. It looks like. I don't know what's gonna come of it. I don't know what's going to come of it. I do know that everything that happens tomorrow and the following day, and effectively this week out to Friday, if effectively if things are not done in a certain sequence of, if a certain, I don't know how to define it, like certain people need to step into certain key roles right away. They need to show up with money right away and they need to start plugging holes on a sinking ship or it's done. And it could be determined, that could be determined as early as this Friday, I suppose. Or they could they could turn it around and save it, but as it stands, um, and I've watched this company employees roll over all the time. It doesn't mean anything to it. It just happens all the time. And it happens for good reason all the time, and um, all the top brass are rolling at the same time, just just turning it over and leaving. And somehow or another. I believe that I was brought to this moment almost by destiny because I could cite back to where I started this story in 2009, 2010, so long ago I don't even remember. That was a lot of talk. If you watch me all the way to the end, thank you. Um, I'm going to get back to this soon. Um, pretty soon I'm not going to have to worry about the fact that my face is on television commercials. That's what it's been about. Now you know. Um, so next time, whenever that is, talk to you next time.